Hey everybody, welcome back to the Iron and Oak Saw Mill, where once again we're addressing an issue with the mill. Uh, in a past video, you saw a repair I've done to the mill where the uh, log turner stop, is what I call it, broken off the mill because the log had rolled over the arm, this arm, rolled it over and laid it completely out this way, flat actually, inverted it down next to the tire. Um, that happened once again. Here's the stop. Uh, I have got to get used to getting that clamp up there to hold it in place. Sometimes the log gets away from you. Some of the odd side stuff we run here, or odd shaped stuff we run here, uh, causes it to get away from us. So, biggest thing is, well, nobody gets hurt because nobody stands on this side of the mill when that log is turned. Uh, we keep it clear and keep everybody safe. That's the most important thing. This, I can fix. <laughs> I don't want to have to fix anything else. So, let's go ahead and get started getting this apart. Hopefully, uh, I'm Alone today, Deb's off doing her thing, so I'm going to be uh, trying to get some good camera angles here, and hopefully you'll see what we're working on. So, first of all, I'm going to work on getting this upper arm off the claw arm, and we'll go from there. I'm going to try to get the best angle for everybody and explain as we go, but I'm also trying to race the rain. I hear it uh, hitting the tarp here on the mill, so I'm uh, going to have to do this kind of quick. Okay, first off, dealing with... Uh, Safety. Safety glasses are wrong because you're dealing with spring tension. This little tool, you've seen this before in the last video where I fixed this, I believe. This was a spring tension tool or a spring tool for uh, two strike exhaust systems back in the day when we used to race quads and uh, had to deal with taking the exhaust systems off and on. But it works really well on getting the springs off of this arm. It's, really, it's just a, a hook on the end, gets the spring off. We're good to go. All right, just let that both hang under the mill. That's it for that tool. Next, okay, I do have a board under here. So when we pull the pin out from, yeah, when we pull the pin out of this arm, this arm's not gonna just drop down. Um, that'll hold it up for us so we can work on it much easier. Okay, we got a couple of cotter pins here. Let me see if I can turn this, turn this pin, make it a little easier to work on here. Nope. Ah, here we go. There. No other, no fancy tools on this one. In fact, I just grabbed the cheapy tools out of the house rather than out of my good mechanics set. So, okay, one cotter pin. That's all you need to pull on that. Big washer off the end. Now, making that pin move. Now these have all been greased, but let me see. Yeah, I can't really knock that on. No, how did I do that before? I forget. And this is moving, the pin's moving. Just trying to get the weight off of it. And the pin moves. It's spinning, it's free in there. Yeah, see? There's no tension from the hydraulic cylinder. I think it's just a combo of everything here. I don't want to tear that pin up because it's got to go through there. See? There we go. Normally, this arm should not go back this far. Uh, that's what happens when it rolls over the back of this and uh, breaks that stop off. So, there we go. Now we're moving. One of the reasons to keep your mill regularly lubed, uh, if not, this pin will corrode itself in there. You have a heck of a time getting it out. There we go. All right. And you can see the markings on the back of here where it's hit the stop pretty hard too. It's dented pretty well, but that's it. Let's set this aside.
Okay, what we need <clears throat> is right here. You can't see it from that angle, but this uh, stop goes right across here. Just repair it and hold up that well. So now we got to get over to that side. There's one bolt to pull out <clears throat> and one pin to take out, and we're good to go. And just in case it starts pouring, let's get all of my other stuff out of the rain, out of <clears throat> undercover. So. All right, what we need to do now is take this retention uh, retention bolt out. This plate is welded to this pin. And that's it. That's all that holds that in. And if I remember correctly, I have enough clearance to pull this pin out right through here. So, again, the cheapy tools from inside the house. <laughs> They're just a cheapy homeowner set. Rather than dragging my stuff out of the shop right now. Half inch wrench, half inch socket. This is a nylock nut on here, so it doesn't loosen up easily. And that board that's holding up the other end of this, you can't see it in this shot, but you saw it in the last shot. That keeps that cylinder from swinging down, which one, it'll hit the dirt, and two, it hits the hydraulic lines on the end of the cylinder. And uh, you don't want to break those fittings off, so. All right, now. Oh, nice. See? Grease fittings. Keep this greased. <laughs> Keeps it from corroding in there. Of course, this arm weighs about 40 pounds, if not more. Now, last time I did this, there we go. I had, there we go. Had the clearance. So, that's your pin there. That's where the retention bolt went through. A little crusty on there. Keep spraying that with some lube. Spraying that with some of that uh, ATF we use. Okay, down on this end. Ooh, yeah, careful with that. Down at this end, take your springs off. Pine sap, just go figure. <laughs> After all the pine we just did. And spruce. And we'll go ahead, <clears throat> lift that arm out. So. What I was looking at from the other side is right here. Okay, what I was trying to show you from the other side is this piece appears to go right there. Here we go. That weld did not hold. There was nothing even there. That never penetrated into this. So it was only held by that. And then this penetrated onto that, but not into this. It's a hard combination because you've got quarter inch steel welding into What's this, 5 eighths, half inch? So, got to get the right settings for that. So we're going to go ahead and, I don't know if we can just put that right back on. What I might do is weld it inside of here too. They, no, I can't do that. It needs that clean area to pivot on. So it's only on the outside. Here, let's go ahead and get all this stuff cleaned up and uh, get some fresh surfaces to work with. All right, again, the hearing protection for the grinder. Got your safety glasses on. Some decent protective gloves. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this uh, old weld taken off of here and also clean this up. Now, I've already flattened this out. It did have a bend to it and a twist. I cleaned all that up. We're going to just grind the ends off. Get a nice clean end to uh, weld to.
stop. find a way to clamp this down on there. There's one other issue I want to address also. Last time this got welded, it pulled in and made it difficult to get the other half of the arm to fit through here. These two blocks, when you weld it this, it drew it in, closed this space up here. So what I want to do is make a block that I can wedge in there to hold that apart while I weld this on. All right, we'll fix that. Put this block in here. Covers top and bottom. Let's get things set up here. Got the welder out. Got to get it plugged in. Installed a new 50 amp outlet. In the basement, we we're able to run an extension cord out. A 25 foot extension cord. Unfortunately, I don't <clears throat> have a garage to weld in. I don't even have a paved driveway, so. Heavy duty. It's amazing. This is the cord they sell for it. <laughs> I guess they don't want any voltage drop over the 25 feet. And here's the cord from the welder, so. Plug them in. Good to go there. So, good welding jacket. Not this thing, it'll just melt holes all over this. Welding gloves, and of course, shield. Yeah. And a little breezy, which I'm not worried about with the shielding gas, which is a, uh, a mix carbon, carbon dioxide and argon gas, because I'm most of the time just welding mild steel. So, like I said, I haven't welded in quite a few years. So, Yesterday, I did a little repair to the mower deck with this. First welds I've done in a long time, so. Let's see how this works out. Gloves on. At least my welder's not getting rained on. Camera is, though. Don't squeeze the trigger when you don't mean to. Uh, it's really starting to come down. All right. That's hot. And it's getting rained on. <laughs> this is not good. All right. That should be a good enough ground. I'm going to back that boulders down a little bit. You want to get that little, nice little sizzly bacon sound. Don't expect there to be stacking dimes, as they call it. All right. That's not going to happen. <laughs> It's good. It's actually getting good penetration on both halves. Yeah, it's a little too hot. Back it down a tiny bit more. That's the sound I'm looking for. It ain't pretty, but it's stuck. <laughs>
Uh oh. I'm losing my grass. It's a little too dirty there. Where's my wire brush? There it is. There we go. All right. It is what it is at this point, folks. All right, let's get the welder wrapped up here. Yeah, that's the power cord. That's it back there. I gotta trim that off. I think I still got tools laying out in the rain. <laughs> gotta get the tools in. You don't bend that MIG cable too hard. The wire runs through it. It's not flux core wire. The ground wire. Where's my ground wire? There it is. Wrap that up. Got all this from Eastwood, which luckily for me is not far from here. Power cord. That can hang with the ground cable. Here we go. Get my tools out of the rain. <laughs> okay, what's well, the following day? We got rained out yesterday, uh, so we got to get finished with this repair so we can get back to milling some lumber. Let's get started. Let me see. All right. Hey. Yep, the part in the neighbors doing some wood splitting and running a tractor around just across the just across the way here. So you might hear him working over there this morning as well. So, so you can tell we got the piece welded back on. We got uh, got some paint on there. Kubota orange, exact match from what I understand. <laughs> Looks good on here. But uh, welded on. Hey, we'll test my welding skills out. It's the way I look at it. But it looks to have good penetration on the welds. Let's see what happens. Well, as you probably guess, this is just reassembly in the reverse order you took it apart. So, and we still have our board set up here to uh, hold the end of this big honking thing up. It's about, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds. Let's see if I can get, there we go. Now this pin came out fairly easy yesterday. Let's hope it goes back in just as easy. There we go. Now I could grease this ahead of time, but I don't wanna <laughs> I don't wanna have to stick my hands in a bunch of grease to get this thing back together. It's got grease fittings, so I'll take advantage of those when we're done. Okay, mainly an alignment issue here. Let me see. Here we go. I don't think this is bent. You know what? Let me get my gloves on. What am I doing? This little thin piece of steel's got some edge to it, and I can't get a hold of it. So get some gloves on. Make life easier. Man. Maybe I did bend it. No, it came out easy yesterday. There we go. And a little bit of sawdust stuck in there. Surprise, surprise, sawdust on a sawmill. There we go. Boom, together. Lined up the bolt hole. Now I'll take the gloves off for this. I don't need to drop this down in that. Down a little sawdust underneath, so. I don't recall a torque spec in the book for this. Just don't over tighten it. <laughs> and don't under tighten it.
Did I just break that? I most certainly did. <laughs> Don't over tighten it. Well, there you go. That's why it's good to keep a little supply of nuts and bolts around the house. Got ourselves a replacement. Well, let's not break another one. I'm guessing that thing was partially fractured already or just a, I don't know. Well, it's fixed now. All right, switching sides. Time to get the actual claw arm mounted up. This one's gonna be, you've got six holes to line up <laughs> with this pin. So let's see how well this goes. Okay, what you wanna do before you get that arm in the way is hang your springs again. Hooks come from underneath. Up, oh, there you go. Don't put your arm on backwards. <laughs> you still have a pin. We only took the one cotter pin and one washer off. Didn't have to take them both off. Now we got. It's got to go through this arm that we already mounted on, through the claw arm, and through the cylinder end. And then through all three on the opposite side as well. So whoa. Okay. Just using a little piece of scotch braid here to clean the hole out. There's a little bit of corrosion in there. This joint here does not have a grease fitting. This only has, uh, this has where, where you spray it with uh, ATF when you're spraying everything else with ATF. So it's got a little bit of, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, it's pine sap, pine sap in the whole thing. That's why it was so tough to get out. All right. Let's see how that works. Let's try it, make sure everything's gonna go through, okay? All right, let's use that as a starting point. If I can get those lined up by doing that. There we go. Sure would be nice to have an extra set of hands here. Gotta do the first three. Adding the claw arm in seems to be the one big pain in the butt. There we go. Bingo. That folks, about the hardest part of this job is getting those lined up. Um, washer again, big washer, big cotter pin. Back in. Don't drop the thing.
and go. All right. See, that's where that's as far as it's supposed to go. When I when that log rolls over, what it does is breaks that stop off, allows this arm to fall all the way out. So, one last thing. Handy dandy spring tool. Reach under here, give him a pull. There we go. And go. Back under spring tension. All right. Get our boards out from under here. Give it a little test run, see if everything's working right. And while I'm standing here with the oil, Last time this happened, we actually bent these springs and I replaced them, although they probably would have kept working. Didn't want to have to deal with it. There we go. Well, that'll wrap up here for the repair on the LT35 here on the Iron Oak Sawmill. Well, time will tell if my welds hold. So all I can do is practice and get better at that. So the log turner is back in 100% operating order again, and we are ready to mill some lumber. If you have any questions about this repair or anything else going on here at the mill, let me know. Put it down in the comments section. Be glad to help you out. Thanks for stopping out, everybody. We'll see you later next time.